Welcome to the Daily Race, and I'm glad you're here today. Uh, we are still studying Nehemiah, and uh, we've moved to, to phase two. We're talking about the, the renewal of the people. And as we're going to look over here the next few days, there's a process for renewal. Uh, I think a lot of times when we think about, you know, a group of people or an organization or a team or whatever, a family, we think about, hey, we're going to, uh, we're going to start again. We're going to, to work on, on phase two. We're going to get back on track. And we start thinking about all of the organizational aspects of it. You know, if it's, if it's a team, we think about the structure or if we think about, you know, all, all the details. But really, it begins with the process. It starts very personal. There needs to be a personal renewal before there's, uh, there's any of these other things that take place. And that's where Nehemiah starts here. God is leading Nehemiah, just an incredible leader here, to take the people through the right process because he realizes his mission, his, his whole thing is not just about a wall. It's about getting the people ready to be successful, to do what God has called them to do. And it begins with personal renewal. Where does personal renewal begin with? Well, in this instance, it goes right to the Word of God. Today, we've got a guest appearance. I always loved back in the day watching like my favorite sitcom, and all of a sudden, someone from another sitcom would show up on that sitcom. You know, it's always on the same network, but you know, a guest appearance, that was, that was always exciting. I don't know why that was exciting for me, but it was. Um, apparently, it was for a lot of people, too, because they did it all the time. Today, we're going to have a special guest appearance here in Nehemiah. It's Ezra. Ezra shows up in the account. And that's because Ezra and Nehemiah are contemporaries. We have a whole book about Ezra. Um, but here we have Ezra making an appearance here in Nehemiah because he was critical to this process. Uh, he was the one that brought the law back, that brought God's word back to the people. So, so let's read here in Ezra, or I'm sorry, Nehemiah chapter 8. It says, All the people gathered in one main, uh, on, as one man onto the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform they had made for that purpose. And beside him stood a list of, of people. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all of it. A lot of people there, a lot of the officials, nobles, uh, religious leaders uh, of the time. And, and then it says this, As Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people, and he opened it, and the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, and they bowed their heads, and they worshipped the, the Lord with their faces to the ground. Um, and then the Levites went out and helped people understand the law while the people remained in their places. They formed small groups. <laughs> and they went out and they, hey, let's huddle up. Let's talk about this. Let's make sure you understand what is taking place there. They read from the book of the law of the law of God clearly, and they gave the sense, and they gave the sense so that people understood the reading. All right, so if they're going to be God's people, if they're going to find themselves following God's commands and not falling into temptation, not adapting the customs and cultures of the people around them, worshiping false gods, not taking care of each other. Nehemiah understands God has led him to that they need a right relationship. They, they need a personal renewal in their life. They need to have an encounter with God. So they start with the scripture. This is what God has called them to do. And they want to make sure they understand what it says so that they can put it into practice. Because if there's going to be any change in in Judah. If there's going to be any change there in Jerusalem, there has to be an internal change in each and every one of them. They all need to have an encounter with God. That is where it starts. <laughs> the changes don't start with changing the structure or, or changing the, the leadership organization. It doesn't start with coming up with a good mission statement. It comes with the people having an encounter with God, a personal renewal. There are other phases. There's relational renewal that's going to take place, and then there's some missional renewal, and then a cultural renewal, and then structural renewal. There's phases to this. There's a process through it that we're going to see as, as God leads Nehemiah through this. But it has to begin personally. I'm not sure if, if you're leading a group of people, whether that's your, your family, 
whether that's a group in the community, a team, uh, a, a shift at your work, a, a group of teachers, a, a cohort. Uh, if you're in a business, uh, you're a supervisor. If you want to change that group, if you want a renewal to take place, a, a more focused, a, a re reimagining of the vision, it has to begin first. They have to personally have an encounter with that. And in this case here, it's it's a spiritual thing that's taking place, a spiritual renewal that has to begin personally. Leading people to have a personal encounter with God is what we see Nehemiah doing here today. All right, we're, we're going to follow these, these five renewals over the rest of this week here and see how God uses Nehemiah to unpack them. But for now, let's go ahead and pause here and let's start our day in prayer. Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much just for the opportunity we have to, to spend some time with you. And God, just the importance of, of our relationship with you. God, we can have the greatest structures, we can have the greatest mission statements, we can have the greatest ideas, but without you, we are lost. Without you, it's, it's a no starter. We need you. We need you not just in our organization, in our families. God, I need you personally. We need you personally in our lives. So God, as we start this, this new phase here in Nehemiah, God, we, we, our desire is to draw close to you. You've given us your Holy Spirit. You've given us everything we need to take our next right steps. Give us ears to listen. Give us a heart that's desire is to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I'm not sure why my camera keeps drifting, but I will see you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.